corny barrel slept and dreamed he saw a sight of teeth and trails and darkened veils and unforgiving light. Two shiny copper teeth removed from nine discarded cones and seven yellow leaves excised from one forgotten tone. So little corny barrel slept and dreamed he had a fright. He woke, remember not, but God had forgotten night. Hello and welcome to Remnant 2. In today's video I'm going to share with you the ultimate summoner guide. So first we're going to start with the archetype. I'm using the summoner and the engineer because these two are probably the best combination for summoner as we have the summon minions that scale with skill damage and the engineer gives us a lot of skill damage. I personally like to go with a Ruthless Mastermind because I have the Summoner Archetype Prime R perk, the Ruthless. Each time you damage your own minions, they get in range, gaining 50% extra to damage, attack speed, F movement speed, which is actually very very good. However, if you're going for boss fights, unfortunately, the Engineer, the High Tech Prime perk, is superior because the Overclock that you're using the Heavy Weapon dealing 25% extra damage, increased fire rate, gains infinite ammo, it's much superior for a burst DPS. So against certain bosses, you may need to go engineer prime perk. However, in most cases, personally, I found the summoner archetype as a prime perk more useful. So a quick overview for the summoner and engineer, when why they scale very good. You see our perks are evolve around skill and mob damage with the summoner. When you sacrifice your minions, which we're not going to do a lot, we need our minions to survive because we rely most of our damage during the minions and using our relic also boosts the hit points, healing of all our minions and the turrets counts as summons. So we get all the benefits from the summoner apart from the ruthless pick. Unfortunately, this if this was applied to the turret, we would be overpowered. So everything else from the perks applied to the turret. And from the engineer, we get extra skill damage, extra damage reduction, and getting a extra back ammo from the heavy weapon, and also refilling our heavy weapon with our relic. So the skill choices. Uh, all the minions and the turrets are pretty cool. However, some perform a little better in most situations. For example, the flying boys are better in almost any situation because they can reach all targets, especially flying bosses that are out of reach even from the river that although he has some range attacks and they are very very slow and they can easily miss compared to the double having minions or flyers. And the same goes for the engineer. Although for example the impact cannon is very good with high stagger, high damage. It has very low range so it's ideal for melee bosses. The same goes for the flamethrower because sometimes it has problems to reach very high targets. So in most cases the Vulcan cannon is the default choice and here in most cases should be the flyer. However, the hollow minions, the rolling boys, as I call them, they're very aggressive compared to the flying boys. They stagger enemies, so if you face enemies like uh, the, root, um, the root tree, they're ideal to cover you because they will charge the enemies, stagger them, distract them, they're ideal. The same goes for the river against melee bosses. He deals a lot of damage, especially with the ruthless. He's very, uh, very devastating, high criticals, high survivability. One of my favorite personal minions is the river. And unless I can go, I'm going with the flyers. And the same goes with engineer. My favorite go to is Vulcan or the Impact Cannon. And I rarely use the Heavy Flamer. So for the gear, we have a lot of choices. However, I'm going to use once again my personal favorites, which is the Jester's Bell. I believe this is the superior choice in most cases because it increases mode and skill casting speed by 35%. Casting a skill or mod increases all damage by 20%, meaning it decreases the damage for your minions, weapons, and everything. And the casting speed, don't sleep on this. You put the turrets faster, you cast your minions faster in case they die. So 
it's very very good. Now, in case you don't have this, and the good alternative as a first is the Soul Anchor. Every time you cast a summon, you get 20% damage to everything in 30 seconds. And because we're using a lot of mods for summons, this will proc. Another alternative solution for maximum damage actually is the Ankh of Power because it gives 50% extra, 15% extra damage. By consuming a relic, you will get 30% extra damage. So this is the highest DPS relic in case you want. However, the utility that the Jester's Bell offer, in my opinion, is best, so I do prefer it. And now let's go to the rings. There are two rings I recommend to use all the time. The first is the Soul Guard. It gives staffs of Bulwark for each summon. So now Bulwark has been updated to gain up to 25% extra damage reduction. And because our mods, I will tell you later, that counts a summon, you see, for example, we don't have any stacks of Bulwark. We summon the River, we have one stack of Bulwark. We summon the Turret, we will have two stacks of Bulwark. However, we also summon the mods, and suddenly we have max stacks of Bulwark, which give us 25% extra damage reduction which is excellent that's why i do like the soul guard and pairing with this the soul link will give us a five percent life steal from the damage from the minions from the summons basically from everything that summon the turret the minions and everything else you get a five percent life steal so this is ideal for survivability these two combination and now we have the flex slots burden of the destroyer is my favorite. It decreases ideal range of all or firearms by 25%. However, it increases all damage by 15%, meaning for the minions and everything. So this is probably one of the best rings you can use. You don't care about firearm damage. Most of your damage comes from the minions and the mods compared to the firearms. So this is ideal. And now we go to the flex slot. You could use the stone of balance. It's a little boring, 7% damage to everything. However, you have other good options you can consider. One of my favorites is the Burden of the Divine, especially for higher difficulties. It decreases your damage by 10%, however, 50% of self-healing also applies to allies and summons. This way your summons will never ever die, and even the lifesteal you gain from the Soul Guard, you also apply it to the, uh, the Soul Link, sorry, also applies to the minions, which is excellent. Another good alternative if you want, is the face shaman ring not only gives you extra heal regeneration and also relic use speed and we're going to use the relics aggressively here because we need to buff our minions buff our summons and everything compared to you could use for example the celerity stone however this is a little better for extra heal regeneration and finally you can also use something like the bright steel ring in case you want to full wear the full heavy super ultra heavy armor and still have the best roll or something like the Black Cat Ring if you go for max uh, difficulty to get an extra life. This will probably guarantee you never to die. Another ring you can use is the Anastasia's Inspiration that gives you haste permanently 7% everything. However, I was using this for most of our, my playthrough. However, this unfortunately does not affect the summons. If this affects the summons, would be my best ring. But affecting me, I don't want rings that affect me unless they give some kind of defense or something like that that's why i'm not using the anastasian's ring anymore and i prefer to use something else although it's a very valid choice if you want for lower difficulties but for higher difficulties i wouldn't recommend it now let's move to the traits there are some flex slots and some slots that are mandatory you know, full vigor is probably mandatory especially if you're going for higher difficulties for survivability we get by default, of course, the Fortify and the Regrowth, extra heal regen and extra armor effectiveness. I like Expertise because you get to refill your turret much faster. And in case your minions die, you don't have to wait so long. So I do really like it. And Bark Skin and Blood Bond a must if you go for max or max difficulty for extra damage reduction. And this also extra damage absorption will make miracles and you survive. And also Rag. Ragged probably is once again mandatory for higher difficulties. Now a few points that they main you can go for triage for extra healing or for spirit extra mod generation depending on the mods. However, if you don't like the mods, you can go for something like the siphoner if you want to use your weapon more frequently. Although I don't use my weapon so frequently, only more probably charge my mods most of the times. 
or you can go with something like more untouchable swiftness are very good points or strong back if you want to just lower the encumbers from your armor and speaking of armor i'm using the heaviest armor i can use without getting the ultra heavy armor in this case i'm using the Litos mark II armor for the body and the gloves and for the head the fey royal head cover and the leg armor this way i have less than 80 weight because for example if i choose my the little shell i go to 80 weight so that's a bust and the same goes for the little leg guard so that's a bust as well however i have a lot of armor as you can see and getting a total of 62.6 damage reduction including with the damage reduction we get from the bar skin which is actually pretty decent without any buffs so we have very high survivability now for the relic there are some options that work best for the relic i would recommend if you want the void heart especially if you know where you're getting damage you can get extra damage reduction for four seconds and then full health my personal favorite that i'm using now is the rune heart that gives us extra health regeneration and extra mod power generation which is excellent and there is one more that doubles the relic uses i still don't have it however this probably is the best to spam relic especially if you have 20 relic uses and specifically spam the relic Give your minions alive, buff the minions and have probably infinite ammo for the Vulcan which is the point of having the 20 relic charges. For the relic fragments, skill damage scales with everything and then I'm going for a little more survivability with 50% more health, 10% more armor although this is also flexible you can get something like a little more healing effectiveness or if you don't have triage this is actually a good alternative. Extra damage reduction actually doesn't give more damage reduction from the armor I have because of the fortify, but you can go even further if you want. I mean, a cost reduction is pretty decent. Basically, don't go so much in extra damage because you don't care. Unless you go for more damage, you can, for example, get a little extra more damage, but it doesn't make a huge difference. Now for the weapons and mods. I do like to use a weapon that has decent range, decent mode generation. That's why I'm using the Black Low AR, which is maximized. And I'm using the Space Grabs. This count as a summon, so these are very good. However, it's a, a downside. The count as summons. However, against certain bosses, the crabs, unfortunately, cannot reach them, the flying boss. So this can be useless or the best mode you can use. Unfortunately, I wanted to use. The harmonized mutator for extra mod damage however it's bugged as you can see it doesn't increase the damage from the mods i have tested it and actually doesn't increase the damage from the mods so i'm using the bandit for just extra mod generation value for my secondary weapon i like the double barrel and i'm going for root lash because once again this counts as a summon and once again the downside they cannot reach the tentacle sometimes the flying bosses i'm using something a little random for picking up armor increase range damage by a little bit because once again we don't care and for the melee weapon i'm using the heavy weapon i can use because i want to be able to stagger enemies rather than kill them so if you don't have the stone breaker which is my favorite weapon for now you can use for example the iron grain sword which is excellent it has better stagger modifier actually don't sleep on this weapon very good to stun the enemies to death especially even some elites elite spellcaster you can stun them to death and your minions can finish them off there are some other mods that count as summons. As far as I know, the Far Geyser counts as a summon, and there are a couple that I haven't unlocked yet. However, they're not as impressive, but you can use, for example, this in place of the crabs in case you cannot reach the boss because this can reach the boss, or you can use some utility mods because you lack a lot of damage. You don't get a lot of value if you use corrosive rounds or hot shots or overflow because we are focusing on skill damage. And these don't scale very well with skill damage. I would prefer if you use something with high uh, flame or debuffing capabilities like the boar or even the healing shot to keep the minions up, although it's not necessary. Very rare you may need to use a healing shot, for example, but you may make a little more tanky in case the crabs are, let's say, useless. The rotation is very simple. When you have summoned your minion, you keep damaging so you can have a range, summon your turret summon both your crabs and tentacles because then we're going to use the heart and if you're using the same heart as me the rune heart you get extra mod power so you get buff your minions buff your summons get mod power get to spend more power and rinse and repeat until the enemy is dead most of the times your minions can get aggro 
you can keep dodging, keep getting hits. It's very forgiving build. And I'm going to move a little bit to the advantages and disadvantages. Which advantages are you are very tanky, very forgiving, very good build, relying a lot of your skills and minions, especially the turret with the overclock is awesome to nuke down bosses and especially even high-end bosses uh, for the apocalypse the only downside once again is that you have to go with specific builds and the crabs and tentacles don't work well with high-end game bosses that are flying bosses or very fast bosses so that's the only downside in my opinion and we're not as damagey as the full damage builds uh, the hunters and the gunslinger that can just beat out bullets and do thousands and thousands of damage very fast however we lack this but we make up with survivability and utility and it's personally one of my favorite builds i've played so far finally this is the setup i'm going to use most of the time stone balance for a little more damage unless my minions i see them die i have to replace with burden of the divine for having a little less damage however self-healing for the allies so this is the most usual setup with my space crabs with my root lash with my armor as you can see we have almost 150 health thanks to the extra health from the relic fragments very tanky basic total damage deduction is 62 however when we have all the stacks from the bulwark we go we skyrocket to 79.2 damage reduction and we also don't forget we have the um, blood bond that doesn't calculate in the damage reduction this is an extra 10 percent that is absorbed by your minions and that was it for today's video I really hope this will help you make your own variation of the Summoner build, which is once again one of my favorites. Thank you, thank you very much for watching. Stay tuned for more upcoming videos for Remnant 2. I do intend to make more videos and more builds. I'm still trying uh, for lower difficulties for Apocalypse. And I hope I see you to the next video. So until next time.
Another segment. I should get this back to the Keeper. 